Hey party people, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Taylor, but I go by T Ram so on all of my platforms. And today we are doing a 100K get ready with me. Uh, if you're watching this, that means I have hit 100K on Instagram and I am just so grateful and just sitting in so much gratitude for all the support and love that you guys give me. More importantly, I am thanking God for choosing me for this, uh, equipping me for this, and just continuing to have his hand on me in my life. Um, so yeah, I want to go ahead and get right into the video, but before I do so, I do want to ask, are you subscribed? Are you a part of the Party People family? Because over here, we celebrate life every single day as the Party People. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and we'll get right into the video. My eyebrows are already done. I didn't want to get on camera, and I have my brows done because they just take too long when I'm trying to talk. And this really isn't about makeup. It's just about chit-chatting with y'all. So I will try to incorporate as much makeup as possible and let y'all know what I'm wearing and putting on my face. So we're getting ready to do some foundation. This is the Estee Lauder um, foundation in the shades Amber Honey and Rich Cocoa. I'll also do my best to leave all of the products in the description bar below as well. So let's get into it. Um, 100K. I definitely thought I would feel differently when I hit this milestone. As of today, actually, uh, it's September 18th when I'm filming this and I'm currently at 98.3. Have not hit 100K yet, but I know I will and I know I will surpass it. So with that being said, I wanted to go ahead and get in front of it and film a 100K video. So I just want to first talk about the journey. <laughs> it is so crazy that this is happening in September because on September 15th of 2021, I actually quit my corporate job. So two years ago to almost the date, I quit my corporate job and decided to pursue this full time. In that moment, I didn't decide to pursue this full time, but I, I did quit that job. I knew I was doing that. Fast forward a year later on September 18th, which is today, but on September 18th, 2022. Well, let me go back a little bit. So on September 15th, 2021, I quit my corporate job and hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. I had been trying to grow my audience. I had told myself that if I gave it all and nothing happened, I would let this dream go. And so I gave it my all. I was posting three times a day, getting to it, not making any excuses for myself and just really doing whatever I could, making sure that my content was entertaining, impactful, inspiring. Um, or educational like something if it wasn't a part of those like I wasn't posting it so I was posting three times a day and then on September 15th 2021 I quit my corporate job hit 10,000 followers so I was like okay God maybe that's like a sign maybe this is like you pushing me out the door right fast forward to September 18th 2022 I had 50,000 followers on Instagram fast forward another year September 18th 2023 we were at 98,000 almost 100,000 followers i like to call y'all party people and family y'all my cousins but followers and to say that i am grateful would definitely be an understatement but i'm just sitting in so much gratitude because <laughs> i know that this kind of growth and literally i have grown like eight thousand in the past two weeks like I was at a standstill for a very long time and I think God was very intentional about that. There were some things that I definitely needed to learn and just let go of, let go of control of. Um, and so he had to help me a little bit. So to be growing at such an exponential rate, and I don't want to say not putting as much work into it because I definitely am putting in work, but to know that it's really not out of my own might that any of this is happening is just even further confirmation that I am supposed to be doing this and more importantly God has his hand on this which for me is the most important thing um I've tried doing things without God and they simply just don't work out anything you obtain outside of God you have to sustain and that is hard <laughs> that is very hard and that, I'm not trying to go that route anymore so I'm really just sitting in gratitude but as I I would say like two weeks ago as I realized that I was getting closer and I would definitely hit it before the end of the year because I genuinely didn't believe that I would hit it before the end of the year it was my goal I would let it down but I would say for the past three weeks my mindset has just shifted to one of abundance and I've been making sure I'm intentional about everything in my life every thought that I have is an abundant thought um and I feel like God is really meeting me where I am because you 
your thoughts become things like you are you think you become what you think and your life is a result of your thoughts and decisions and so i was just like you know what why not me why not me like there's no reason why it it shouldn't happen for me or to me you know what i mean so when i started to realize that this was going to happen that little voice inside of me was like you should stop posting like nobody wants to hear from you you don't really make an impact like nobody cares about what you have to say um and one quote that i heard recently that really shifted a lot for me was the more resistance you have for something the more you have to do that thing because that is the very thing that is going to lead you into your dreams and no truer words have ever been spoken um and everything that i'm of course doing behind the scenes that you guys don't know about that i felt so much resistance on or i told myself like i'm not i'm not capable of doing it and it's just like oh yeah this thing is actually going to be life changing this thing is actually going to move the needle in my life in a way that my life will never be the same right this is the v saint laurent Touche Eclat Radiant Touch. <laughs> uh, it's a concealer. I've just really started to believe that anytime I have resistance to something, it is just confirmation that I really should be moving towards that thing. And that's not to say, because I know the difference now, like my discernment has gotten a lot better. I know the difference now between resistance and just knowing that I shouldn't be doing something. Like there's, there's a difference, right? So yeah i got this urge to just like not post like not basically self-sabotage like if i don't post that means i won't grow if i don't post that means like i'm not getting any closer to my goal and that'll give me a reason to complain about why things don't work out for me that would give me that would justify that would be my um confirmation bias as to why i didn't hit this goal that i have always wanted to hit and so and like the Holy Spirit was just like, let, let's not do that. Like, let's go harder than you ever gone before. So I started pushing out content dang near every single day. I have not posted every single day since I started, probably. Like, I have not posted every single day. And another thing that I feel like the Holy Spirit has recently just like put on my heart is have fun. I feel like for a good period of time, I was not having fun with creating content. I was creating it because I knew I had to. Um, and not because I actually desire to. And in this season that I'm in right now, like I am genuinely having fun with the content that I'm creating and putting out into the world. But more importantly, I'm not I'm not tied to the numbers as I used to be. Like I used to be so down and out when a post didn't perform well. And I feel like I really put my heart and soul into it. And I'd be so down if I wasn't growing every day. And I'd be so down if I wasn't getting a certain amount of brand deals or I didn't get a brand deal I thought I already had in the bag. Like my mindset has just shifted in so many ways to where it's just like control what you can control and literally let God handle the rest. And I just find so much peace in that because I know at the end of the day, God promised me. Like literally God has spoken this over my life and the moment that God speaks a promise over your life, it is already complete. Like it's done because God is a God that he cannot lie. Like he cannot go against himself. He is the truth, right? So I don't know. I just, I'm so sure about what I'm called to do and I'm so sure that God has called me to this that anything that could possibly deter me from it now doesn't. Not to say I don't have human emotions around it and I still don't feel some type of weight in certain situations and scenarios, but it doesn't leave a lasting impact or effect on me. And for that, I am grateful. Yeah, so the journey has definitely been a wild ride, but I'm grateful that, you know, God has chosen me for this and he has called me to this and he has equipped me for it. And one thing that I did not realize about hitting 100K is how I would feel. I thought I would feel a sense of accomplishment. I thought I would feel a sense of, mama, I made it. I thought I would feel like this was my 
my moment, right? I don't feel that at all. Matter of fact, I literally cried to my best friend um, during one of our Bible studies because I was just like, I'm, and she helped me to give me the language because I could not identify what I was feeling, but I knew it wasn't the feelings that I thought I would feel. And she helped me to realize that I felt grieved. Um, I felt grieved because I finally hit this milestone and it feels nothing how I thought it would feel. And that made me sad. It made me sad that I didn't feel the way I had imagined. And the way that I feel is that I felt like God was telling me, yes, you hit this milestone, but this is just the beginning. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me like, you're still going to have to continue to fight in this industry. And that made me so sad because I'm like, God, I'm already tired. <laughs> like, I'm gonna keep it a book. I'm like, I'm already tired. Being a black woman in this industry, being um, what feels like, be, being in a fight where it feels like you're constantly fighting for people to value you and people to see you, it's like, that becomes very tiring. And I told God, I'm like, ugh, babes, babes, I'm already tired, okay? <laughs> like, I'm tired of this good fight, okay? And it's so crazy because God literally hears you, babe. Like, God hears you. And so I was in my word, and I actually want to pull it up. I was in my word, and I came across the scripture, and I, it literally struck my spirit so hard because I'm like, I knew this was a word for me because, like I said, he told me, like, you're going to have to continue to fight. Like, you're, you're not fighting just for yourself, but you're fighting for generations to come. This fight is not going to end just because you hit 100K. And he, I felt like he put on my spirit, like, you're just beginning. Like, you're just getting started. And so the scripture was, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I literally have chills, y'all. I have chills. I have chills. <laughs> um, and when God said, like, you're going to have to continue to fight, I thought he meant me. I thought he meant that I was going to have to continue to fight out of my own might and my own will, which is why I'm so tired, right? But no, he means he's going to fight for me. And my job is just to be still and know. Ooh! Yep. Yep. That'll do it. That'll do it. <laughs> like, oh, for sure. That'll do it. And it struck me so much because it's just like, when you, I feel like when you get a word from God or when you are here in the Holy Spirit, you don't always know what he means. And a lot of times we want clarity or we want to answer right in the moment. But this was literally, this was two weeks ago that I had talked to God about this and like prayed about this and submitted this to him. I just got that scripture yesterday. <laughs> Nonetheless, I still got it, but it didn't come in the time frame that I wanted it to come. But I feel like that even goes back to this entire testimony of, of his growth and his hand on my platform. Like it's going to happen in his time when he knows that I am prepared and when he knows that I can handle what is coming and that he can trust me with it. That's when he'll give it to me. Because why would my father want to give me something that he knows I'm ill-equipped and ill-prepared for? That's sabotaging. And my God is good. My father is good. He does not want me to sabotage anything that he gives me, right? So I really found solace in that scripture. And I'm just so grateful that, you know, I serve a God who not only sees me, but he hears me and he remembers. Oh, God, he remembers. He truly, truly remembers. So yeah, I feel like that's where I've been with hitting 100K. Like I said, it definitely doesn't feel how I thought it would feel. I am grateful, but also like grieved because I really understand that I'm on assignment now. And I am responsible for the platform I have, well, I can't even say I've created, the platform that God has given me and have worked for. But also I realize that that means I'm responsible for all of you who are watching me, right? And that is a burden. <laughs> and I know we don't like to talk about that, but that's a burden. And it's not a burden I have to carry alone. God definitely helps me, but it's still a burden nonetheless, right? This is the CoverGirl Clean 
normal pressed powder in the shade 165 Fawn Tawny Fauve. I really felt great for like I would say a full week which is why I didn't vlog that week for those who like this isn't your first video of mine. Um, yeah, I just really had to work that out within myself and with God because I was like, dang, I thought I would feel like I, you know, did a little something, something when I hit 100K. And it's like, girl, you're just getting started. You have so many more lives to touch. You have so many more people to reach. And you have so many more people to bring closer to God. Like, you're on assignment and I got to be about my father's business. Period. <laughs> um, so now I am encouraged and I'm excited to see, you know, what God has in store as far as, you know, this platform and um, this career. Now I'm excited. But before I was just like, oof, this is ghetto, 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 ghetto. This is ghetto. Um, <laughs> this is the dibs. It's like a, I don't know what to call this, but it's like a blush and bronzer stick in the shade Plot twist and level up. So like on one side it has a blush and then on the other side it has contour. I'm not contouring. I'm not going anywhere. This is just for, this makeup is literally just for y'all. And makeup that I have like really just been loving like an everyday little beat. Should I talk about that? How honest do I want to get? <laughs> How honest do I want to get on here? Might as well. You know your testimony is supposed to help encourage others. So Lord use me. So I'm gonna keep it a book. When I was in Greece, I was getting very impatient. Impatient is the word. I was getting very impatient and I was getting very discouraged and my faith was not where it should have been when it comes to this career choice and just what I feel like God has called me to. And with that being said, I tried to pull a Sarah, right? I tried to do something or I started taking steps towards like being my own God because I didn't want to wait on God. God was taking too long. So I'm like, you know what? And let me just give you a little context to what I'm about to share. Before I left for Greece, so I would say January, February, March, between March and April, I just really felt like spiritually attacked. And so much so that I told God, if this don't work out by the end of the year, I'm going back to corporate America. Listen, I, I'm very transparent with my God and that was disrespectful. It, that's just what it was, it was disrespectful. I have since apologized. However, that's how I felt and I stood 10 toes behind it. I was like, God, you the one who called me to this and you're not making it happen for me. You, you're not making it happen fast enough. You're not doing what you say you're going to do. So if you don't do it, I'm going to do it for myself. And so I told him, by December 31st, if this don't work out, baby, I'm going back to corporate. I'm giving this little dream up. Okay? Okay. And at this time, oh, this is the Lancome ultra precise waterproof liner and I'm just using it to go in with some faux freckles. It's a brown. I just don't ask me I'm doing faux freckles. I, I like them. It's cute when I it's cute. You don't gotta do it. Um and so just for context, I had not been growing on my platforms. I felt like not only was I not growing, I was losing followers. My engagement was super low. Again, focusing on numbers and not even focusing on the present moment focusing on the future that will have you in a cycle of just negativity when you're not being present so i was just looking at the numbers and i'm just like god you're literally like going against the promise that you made me like you are not being a man of your word like literally just so upset at god like legit just upset and so during all of this, I told him, like in a moment of just frustration, in a moment of like, I'm so over this and I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I have to do this out of my own might since you're not moving, you're not doing anything, I can't see you. I pulled this hair and I was just like, okay, well, if you won't do nothing, I will. And impatience is literally the worst thing 
that you could have when on a journey of fulfilling or watching God fulfill a promise. Like, impatience literally will breed sin. And that is scary. So, it, I got so serious. I even told my mom. I was like, if God don't need nothing by the end of the year, oh, I'm going back to corporate because if he's not doing nothing, then I need to do something. And of course, my mom was just like, Taylor, you know that's not what you called to do. And I think that's super important to be surrounded by people who not only know what God has called you to, but who also know you. And I am a doer. I'm a person who is about execution. And I am somebody who, if it ain't getting done, we got to get to it. Because, but that's also a lack of faith as well. Because if I don't believe that God is going to do it and I have to do it out of my own mind, what does that say about me and my belief in him? So my mom spoke life into me and, and even my TT Nat spoke life into me, but she gave me tough love. She was just like, the enemy, oh, I get chill, I get chills. She was just like, the enemy is on you and you have to identify that you're falling into the trap of believing the lie that God is not going to fulfill his promise. So you're calling, God, you're calling God a liar. And I was, I was like, we got to be honest here. I was definitely calling God a lie and I was telling him that he was not a promise keeper. But that was out of my frustration. And so, of course, got back in my word. I was like, you know what? I'm going to continue to believe that he's going to do it for me. Like, you know, I'm not going to stress about it. I went to Greece, had an amazing time. As I'm getting closer to leaving Greece, that impatience and that unbelief sits right back in. And I feel like now it's worse than it was before. So instead of identifying that this was an attack, which I did, I still fell into the trap of believing the lie. So you know what I did? I said, well, I got a few weeks before I come back. Let me reach out to uh, one of my connections in corporate and just tell them like I'm on the market. And I did exactly that. I reached out to her. I sent her my resume. She was like, oh my gosh, I've been thinking about you. And I wanted to know how you were doing and how like influencing was going. Da, 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 da. And I was like, yeah, girl, um, it's going good. Uh, but I want this corporate job. So let's get to it. She reviewed my resume, started submitting it. And me in my disobedience, I still brought it back to God. I was like, God, if I'm supposed to go back to corporate, you'll make it easy. If I'm not supposed to go back to corporate, you won't make, you will literally not make it happen. So I reached out to my connect a few weeks before I left Greece. So we'll say July, cause I left Greece in August. We'll say July. I reached out to my connect in July. I told her I would be back in mid August and I could start setting up interviews for then. And she told me, perfect. I will let you know. I will keep you posted on interviews like and let me know your salary range, like what you're looking for, what kind of, you know, job you want to go into, yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, cool. I'm gonna get this money. Weeks, 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 weeks go by. I don't hear from her. I said, oh God, you don't want me to go back to corporate. <laughs> I have not heard a peep from this girl. I'm already back in the States. Ain't heard a peep. Ain't heard a peep. Okay, God will literally block you from you. And we thank him for that. Haven't heard a jack thing from this girl. Mind you, my resume is good. Like I could find a job today if I wanted to. So I know it's not me, you know what I mean? Because I've worked in a corporate before. Like, so I was like, you know what? And in the midst of that, I got back. In the midst of that guy, I was in the word and God reminded me of the ultimatum that I gave him. Ain't that funny? He remind you of what you said. And God was just like, you the one who gave me an ultimatum. You're not even living up to your own word. You can't even keep a word that you said. I never gave myself an ultimatum. You gave me an ultimatum and you're not even keeping your promise. Like you're not even keeping to what you said. You said until the end of the year. When he told me that, it was August. He said, you, I got till December to make some shake. I said, ooh, you ate me up, God. You ate and left no crumbs, baby. You ate. This is the Fenty Beauty um, Kilowatt, and I'm using the shade Mo Honey. I said, okay, God, you ate on that one. You, you ate me up. You ate me up now. 
you ate me up. You really did. <laughs> And I got, y'all, I got so convicted. Like, legit, I got so convicted. Because I'm like, dang, I ain't even a woman of my word. Like, I'm the one who gave my big God an ultimatum. And I'm not even keeping my word. Like, I'm so impatient. I can't even wait till I said the ultimatum was. And God don't even have to honor that. Even in my disobedience, he's like... <laughs> now because my faith has grown so much since then and it's crazy to say because it's only been a few months but it, I laugh because I'm like that's so immature you were so immature for that like how do you give God an ultimatum you are so disrespectful and God still sees me and he still honors it like but that's what he said he said um you said to the end of the year babes it's August I got time I got plenty of time if I want to make it happy December 31st I can if I want to and so I just went into complete submission again and complete surrender because I was just like, how rude, how disrespectful, how dishonoring is it for my father? Ooh, I'm getting chills. How to, for my father to give me a promise, to declare something over my life, to tell me exactly who I am and what I'm supposed to be doing and what I was created for. And I dishonor that because I don't like his timeline. Jesus. Ooh. I do not want to cry in here, but yeah, that got me. That really got me. So I just went into complete like submission and surrender. Like, God, okay, what do I need to do to really surrender this back to you? Like, what do I need to do to really let you have this? Like, I felt like December of last year, I fully surrendered and I was like letting him completely lead and guide me, but I felt like I strayed away from that and I did. And so I'm like, how do I get back to that? And it's just really getting back in his word. like, And he was just like, create intimate time with me. like, And so I did. And so now I spend every day with God a certain amount of time at night where I just simply talk to him. Like, even if we don't talk about Jack Diddley squat or that might not be of importance to anybody else, like God wants to hear about what I'm thinking. God wants to hear about my day. Like God wants to hear about what I'm struggling with or like what I'm excited about or like what good thing happened today. He cares. And that's how you build anything. And that's how you build any relationship through communication and through consistency. And I had kind of lost that. I was doing it out of obedience and not out of like desire. And I feel like that season of just like him putting everything on pause made me have to slow down and really look within myself and say, okay, like, babe, you're the problem. And remind myself that the only time, the only thing that can separate me from God is me. And I created this barrier between us because I didn't trust him. I didn't believe that he was actually going to do what he said he did because I was comparing him to man. And if man disappoints me, then God has to disappoint me. And that is so not true. That is a lie from the enemy. But you have to identify that. And I was waiting and looking for God to disappoint me. I really was. And of course, my mind has been shifted and transformed now, but in that time, like, I was just so, like, I just remember feeling, like, such despair, like, genuine despair. I'm going in with the Fenty Beauty Hella Thick Mascara in the shade because I'm black. Yeah, we love that. Um, but yeah, like, I just remember feeling, like, so defeated and just so hopeless and when you get to a hopeless place it is easy to lose sight of the vision and lose sight of the purpose and so i'm glad that god has not only restored me in that area but like he has given me hope and he is you know giving me a joy that i genuinely just cannot describe and i'm just grateful so for anybody watching this and you know what god has called you to and you know what he has promised you do not lose sight of that. Do not allow your impatience to deter you from the very promise that he has given you. Don't be like Sarah and Abraham. Don't that God has given us the Bible so that we can see these things and not repeat them. Like we don't have to be impatient. The promise is guaranteed. <laughs> it is guaranteed. And so when we are impatient and disobedient, we are literally causing 
delay and disorder to the very thing that he wants for us. And we don't want that. We don't want that. So please, like I hope this is encouraging for you to keep on pushing, to keep on going. Like I literally had this tattoo and I'm so grateful because it just says keep going. Like it is a daily reminder. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it is a daily reminder to like not give up and not allow my feelings to determine how I show up or when I show up. I am built for this and I am equipped for this. And God knew the journey that all this would take. And he still sent me on it. And so that means that I'm prepared and I am ready and I'm equipped. And I have everything that I need to sustain me on this journey and to propel me forward into the next dimension. Like I lack nothing. So yeah, I say all this to say that while 100K is a very big accomplishment, um, I am not stuck on the number because I know that God has me on assignment, has me on mission to impact even more people and bring more people to him. And so that's my concern. That is my, that's my call. And so while I am grateful for 100,000, I know there are so many more people to impact and to inspire and to be an example of God on this earth. Um, and also just to introduce people to Jesus. Some people don't know Jesus. A lot of people don't know Jesus at all. And so I hope that any piece of my content or even this video helps you to know that like God sees you, God loves you, he remembers you, he remembers every promise he has given you and he will fulfill it. Like he will genuinely fulfill it. He will genuinely fulfill it. He fulfills every promise. And if you don't believe that, read the Bible. There's not been a promise that he has said to anyone that he did not fulfill, that did not come to pass. And so what I've started doing when I read the Bible and I feel like it's a situation that I'm currently going through where like God is taking me through or learning, like trying to teach me something. I put my name in it and I've been in Esther because I feel like God told me to go back and read Esther because I feel like I am Esther in a lot of ways. And there's a scripture that says Esther found favor with everyone who saw her. So you know what I say? Taylor finds favor with everyone who sees her. And it happens like there's no reason like some of the things that have happened to me happens and it, it's not even big things. I just call them little God things like and my recent prayer has been God allow me to see your footprints and fingerprints throughout every interaction and I have it is crazy but you 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 just have to ask and I think a lot of times we think things are too small or we think we really think that God is has a limit like to what he can do. And there, God is limitless. He truly is. You just have to get out of the mindset that anything involving God has a limit, does it? And if I'm attached to a limitless God, that means I got to be at least a little bit limitless. Some of that has to be in, in me because I made it his image. I'm going in with the lip liner from the Lip Bar Straight Living. So yeah, y'all. Like, I really hope this encouraged you. Um... To just keep going like we are all going through our own struggles and fighting our own battles but i want you to remember that god keeps every single promise he is not a god that he can lie um and nor does he desire to like god does not want to lie to you god does not want to hurt you god really does want the best for you he truly does but you have to believe that and sometimes it's hard to believe because we live in a body, we live in a flesh that never wants to please God. Um, so give yourself grace for sure, but also get in your word, spend quality time with God and just watch him work. And for all my young people, because I am, dang, my birthday's coming up. I'm about to be in my mid twenties. I officially hit the mid twenties. Um, for all my people, my young people who are in their early twenties, mid twenties, late twenties, you have time. You are not behind at all. Like everything that has happened in your life when it has happened was in God's timing and was 
all working together for your good and I had to constantly tell myself that because now I actually believe it I genuinely believe that every single thing is working together for my good there's nothing that has gone forsaken like every little experience that I've had has been necessary for the woman I am today for the career that I have today for the people I'm meeting today all of it is working together for my good like truly so know that you are in the right place at the right time and it's okay to desire things that you desire because God has put those things in you like your desires are not crazy they literally God has implanted those things in you so you can fulfill your purpose in this earth because he's literally given us all different desires so that we can fulfill different things that he needs to be fulfilled on this earth so know that what you desire is not wrong know that what you desire even though it may not be in front of you right now it is already coming to you and that you have to do the work for that thing to come into fruition but you also have to trust and believe that God is going to see it through he will see it through um I'm actually going to try this sweet mouth what is this the gloss bomb on top I've really been into like matte lately but let's just ooh, that's cute I love that and then we're gonna go in again with this caudalie to finish off this look. But that's it, y'all. I really hope this helped you. I hope it blessed you. And I just hope that, you know, as you are on your own journey, that God is with you and that He loves you. He loves you like more than you could literally ever think or imagine. And he fulfills every promise like he fulfills every promise and I do want to say this too publicly I want to say this publicly whatever God is about to do in my life however fast I'm gonna grow whatever deals I get whatever is coming next whatever blessings are getting ready to pour out and overflow over my life know that it ain't me it is not Taylor it is not her might it is not her will it is not her talent it is not her beauty it's because God did Say it with me. God did. So don't come over here asking me what strategy I use, what 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 algorithm on Instagram, baby. God did. Because the past 14 days of growth on my Instagram mathematically don't make sense. God did. Because I really believe that God is about to literally pour out blessings on my life that I cannot explain that I'm going to be in such overflow that it spills on all the people around me I genuinely believe that I can't tell you when it's going to happen I can't tell you how it's going to happen I just know that it's going to happen so when it happens when you see all these things happening and I post about it and I share it if I decide to share it Know that it is not Taylor. <laughs> it is not me. It is literally all God. And know that this is not an overnight success story. I've been at this since 2016. We are approaching 10 years almost. Know that there have been many nights I've cried. Know that there have been many days that I've wanted to quit. Know that there have been many days where I wanted to give up. Why do you feel like I had anything to say like don't see the end result and want that without all the sacrifice without all the work without all the 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 process of sanctification like when I tell you God has been dragging me through the mud about just doing better like ooh, crying in the club crying in the club crying in the club but I'm grateful because literally being formed and being molded in the dark allows me to have this platform at this at this level and not mess it up because he's already dealt with me on so many things that you guys never were privy to. So don't want the, the result and not the entire process. So I'm learning to genuinely fall in love with the process, focus on the process, whatever the result is, the result is. Like I'm no longer tied to the results, I'm tied to the process because that's where God is. And that's where all other things that make you you, that's where they are. Like if you didn't go through half the things that you went through in your life, you would be so boring, you wouldn't have nothing to talk about. 
baby. So I'm grateful for every single thing that I've been through, every single thing that I've overcome because it has just leveled me up to a place where I'm able to relate to other people, where it has strengthened my faith, where it has added to my testimony. And one day I will be able to share my full testimony with y'all because I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. All I can say is just know that God did. So I appreciate y'all. I thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you are new, welcome to the family. I am so happy that you are here. And also, thank you guys so much for 100K. I genuinely appreciate all the support and love that you give me on each and every platform. And I hope that this message was inspirational and maybe entertaining for you, but I hope that you got one little nugget from me. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. I love chatting with y'all. Um, but that's it for me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you in the comment section below. Always remember, I love you. God loves you more. And never, ever, ever forget to stay prayed up, stay motivated, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye, y'all.